Here are the best pro tips for the newest game mode in Overwatch 2, Flashpoint. Flashpoint is a fresh new game mode, but with familiar elements from other game modes from both Overwatch 1 and 2. Just like in Push, the game mode is played over one long round, but instead of playing around the bot that moves two payload-like barriers, you're instead playing over multiple control points just like King of the Hill. It's a hyper fast game mode. You have to be quick on your feet to get between the points, both to retake them and to approach the new ones. First, you need to know where the points are. We all know how cluttered this game can be. Just, yeah, it's a bit of a rough user and viewer experience. That's why a lot of people turn down the clutter in their game. And one of the ways you can do this is with waypoint opacity. After just playing a map a couple of times, you've probably figured out where the point is. That means you can turn your waypoint opacity down so it doesn't clutter your vision when you're in a team fight. However, Flashpoint, you definitely need your waypoint opacity way up because the game otherwise doesn't tell you where the next point is after the first one is captured. Now that your settings are all fixed, let's start with the first objective. Every flashpoint map always starts with the middle point active. This is so everyone knows where the point is and so it's not randomized. Just like in Control, you have 30 seconds after the spawn door is open to set up the fight because the point isn't unlocked yet. Even though the two game modes have very similar objectives, in flashpoint, the point ticks up way faster than control. It takes only a little bit over one minute to get from zero to 100%. That's really just two fights. But because you have to capture the point first, or the point isn't ticking up for either team, it's likely to be more around three. But if you're able to win the first two fights, you can easily snowball and make it really difficult for the other team to push in for the final overtime fight of every given point. I'll be creating tons of advanced content for the Game Leap site starting this week. Use the link in the description to get a Game Leap membership with access to hundreds of guides you can't find anywhere else for all roles, DPS, tank, and support to help you climb and fiend for top 500 and beyond. Look out for those and enjoy the video. Overwatch 2 has a lot of big maps. Game modes like Payload and Hybrid have a lot of space to cover, but it's done gradually. In Flashpoint, as soon as the point is checked in, you might have to cross almost 200 meters to get to the next one. And especially if you're staggering, your team is going to be all over the place and you definitely don't want to be caught waddling slowly with your pants around your ankles for 200 meters. Bunker comps are really good in this patch, but they're at their best when they're already defending a point. So when you have to rotate 200 meters to get to the next point, the other team is already there waiting for you and setting up. Dive comps and brawl comps, even though they won't be able to compete directly with the front line of bunker, they can easily set up engages for when the bunker team has to rotate into the point. When it comes to diving or rushing, you're always at your weakest when you're in rotation. If a brawl comp is rotating, they can get hit by an EMP and won't be in a good position to defend against it. Likewise, divers can easily find someone who's rotating out in the open and get a quick pick on them. The original game modes from Overwatch 1, Control, Payload, and Hybrid all have really different types of maps. King Zero has winding streets and an open finish. Busan also has massively open points surrounded by high grounds. And we all know what the sightlines on Havana are like. Basically, there's a lot of variety, even if some of that variety is pretty cringe. But when it comes to flashpoints and push maps to a certain degree, they're all pretty similar. Even though there's only two maps out so far, it's pretty obvious that most of the points, even if some of them are inside, are really open and have a lot of different flank routes. In Flashpoint, there's so much movement that getting to the point is a phase of its own. Usually it's taken for granted. So not only do you have to make the correct rotation to the point, but then you have to approach the point itself as best you can. So the points in Flashpoint are usually pretty big, surrounded by angles. But also, when you're getting to the point, most of the time, you can be pretty vulnerable. Some of these side streets are almost objectives of their own. For example, New Junk City has so many side streets that it's really easy for flankers to get some key duels and win them for picks. Let's look at how Dive can do a lot of work on Flashpoint. First off, Dive characters, even without Lucio, have the mobility of their own to get to the point early. And getting to the point early means you can set up a fight early. If you're there before the enemy team, you can set up and hide behind them. So many of the points in Flashpoint have small surrounding areas that are outside of the point. Flank routes that you can use to get onto the back line, undetected. Undetected is a key word here. If you're staging a dive, it's always best if the enemy doesn't know where you are. It's kind of obvious, but it's pretty important. Even as Winston, if you're in the middle of the map, people know where you are and they'll be looking to boop you. So you can use your DPS to flank around while you get ready for the engage to happen. In Flashpoint, it's super easy as long as you get to the point first. Overwatch is an objective game first and foremost. And now that we have five objectives on one map, it definitely matters a lot. So make sure that when the point unlocks, 
that's your moment to go aggressive on the back line. In fact, before the point unlocks, most people are on the defensive. That's when you don't need to go in. There's nothing to do for either team but wait and get ready to fight. So if you go in early as the aggressive team against the defensive one, it's likely they're able to deflect your engage. But when the point unlocks and they have to put someone on the point, that's when you can play for the 5v4 in the back line, get a man advantage and go in fast. Now for the rush comps. If you're playing rush comps, it's a little bit easier than dive. You use your mobility to get to the point first, but after that, you actually don't always have to go in. Rush is supposed to rush in, but on flashpoint, rushing to the point is probably enough. Once you've gotten there, you can set up defensive positions because of your speed being able to get there so fast with the Lucio speed and the sim TV. After that, all you need to do is set up defensive positions. Unlike dive, rush is pretty good at holding their ground as well. So if you're playing a Ryan comp, remember you don't always need to just rush in, like the name says. Still, just like how dive wants to wait for a good opportunity to get an advantage and push in and kill the backline, rush also wants a big advantage to go and make the fight what happen fast. You don't want to set on point forever, even though you can do it for quite a while. Each role has their own way of playing to the strength of the rush comp. As a DPS, you usually have really important cooldowns for the tempo, like May Wall and Sim TP. So make sure you don't waste them early, so you have them ready for when an advantage presents itself. For tanks, it's all about being patient. It's really fun to just go in and go crazy, just like Ryan in the Honor and Glory cinematic, but you gotta chill sometimes and let the space work for you. Most tanks are really good at stuffing chokes, just basically stuffing the choke points full of damage, mostly AoE. Winston, Ryan, Ramatra, they can all throw massive damage into the choke, spamming it, not allowing anyone to get through. This way, you get value by just sitting in the point and spamming, even if you're playing a rush comp. And for the supports, it's all about using those defensive positions that you get by getting to the point super early. When you're so far back and your team is defending ahead of you, you can throw nades as Ana, you can just focus on only shooting as Bap, there's a lot of stuff you can do that doesn't have to be just healing. Now, you're gonna wanna learn which specific defensive positions you're gonna wanna take on these maps. It is a new game mode with two new maps after all. Keep an eye out on this channel for future videos where we're gonna look over Suravasa and New Junk City. Positions, rotations, hidden spots, and flank routes, we're gonna cover all of it. In conclusion, you're gonna wanna play fast. Fast as hell. Overwatch 2 is generally a more fast-paced game. Without another tank to slow things down, you gotta do or die. And that's kind of obviously the design philosophy behind Overwatch 2. I mean, both of the new game modes are just one super long round. You basically have no time to rest, at all. And that means you gotta go fast, stay quick on your feet, and make rapid fire decisions to win you the game. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out on this channel for more content and guides to help you stay ahead of the curve with upcoming heroes, maps, game modes, and comps that you can download and exploit for massive success in the rank.